Good there morning. Is. Good evening, Trevor. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. That's the only yellow I could rustle up. Oh. Are you serious? Are you actually serious? You that is the only thing. yellow. There's a fair bit of I, black, though, but it looks yeah. good against the black it, it Actually, it looks really good against the black top. I'm sure I'm on uh, LinkedIn, you, you were talking about rummaging through the wardrobe. You must have a whole plethora of yellow uh, kits somewhere, no? Not a thing. Not a jot. Nothing. Right. Anyway, I feel like I should. I feel like I should. Though. So uh, maybe, leave you know. That, Trevor, leave that with us. Trevor, before we start um, going into what you do and, and what you're about right now, we um, took some inspiration from you when we were on your podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago about asking a question to our guests. And I think that's a really good one. So we're going to start today by asking you about your morning routine, because we were very keen to know about what real life business people actually do when they get up in the morning. When we uh, look online. Successful. When we look at online and we see lots of successful businesses talking about getting up at 4 a.m., maybe doing some yoga, taking a glass of water doing their mantras, that kind of stuff. We love the idea of that. But for us in our world, it usually goes like this, right? All right, yeah, all right, right. got a coffee. Yeah, yeah. A coffee, pour a coffee. And then we think about the day and then we get on with it. So I'd be curious to know, as a successful businessman yourself, what is your morning routine like? Well, of course, we're, we're in Melbourne. We're still in stage four lockdown. So we're uh, been in that for quite some time. So my mornings are, you know, have been a little bit different today than what they would have been a year ago. But uh I, I certainly, I try not to go straight onto the computer. So I really do try and do some reading uh, early on. That's something I've been trying to do the last um, few months uh, because I was just coming in and going straight into into the computer and because I'm on social all the time, that's, that's a bit of a default. Um, but I, what I am trying to do now is get up and I read um, after a shower and, and a coffee and a coffee, a couple of coffees. But I, I try and read. So, and I'm, I'm going old school with hardcore books now. Um, I've just been buying uh, from Book Depository and Amazon. I've been buying books left, right, and centre. The the, uh, the physical copy, which I love having that in my hand. There's something about book, isn't there? Oh, it's terrific. It's yeah. it's you know I, I don't mind still buy. I'll still buy it other other uh, books on Kindle and stuff, but the ones I really want, I, I want to devour them. So, yeah, so doing a lot of reading with a highlighter in hand and um, and and I try and write early as well. So I don't hit that up every day, but I'm trying to sort of get into the probably the 40 to 50 minutes of writing before I get into the, into the work. So less about social straight up, more about writing and oh. reading. That's very, that's very, um, I was reading, I bang on about this book all the time, but Ross Edgley's The Art of Resilience. Have you read Ross Edgley? No, I, 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 best book I've read in donkey's years. And um, he, t long story short, he talked, he wants to take sports science and adapt it for longer sports mm. adventures, athletic adventures. And one of the things he explores is stoicism, going to the ancient philosophers in Greece. And one of the things he took from the ancient philosophers for the stoicism he wanted to bring to his adventures was exactly that, that journaling, that writing writing every morning and he found that that was an amazing bit of of, of setting him up for the day i highly recommend that mm. but, so, but, yeah so trevor pr warrior so can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is you do as a business yeah so um it's kind of evolved so my background very much is in, in pr consulting and uh from the old school traditional pr consulting going back a, <laughs> a couple of decades few decades but um back in 2007 is when i started blogging um, and uh, that changed everything. So uh, my blog was called PR Warrior. It's still there. Um, it's still, in fact, the, the original one is still on TypePad, but I'm, I've also got, um, I've evolved it into one called uh, PR Warrior on PRWarrior.com. So uh, every time I go to walk away from the name, I, it's sort of, I keep coming back to it. So I haven't completely got, got rid of it at all. Um, and I'm still writing on, um, on all topics. It's always been from content, social media, blogging, um, you know, community, uh, branding, um, media relations, earned media, influencer, everything that intersects. So for my sins, I join a lot of dots, which means I've got to keep keep reading and keep experimenting. And, and the other thing about being PR Warrior was all about being in the, in the trenches, on the front line of the communications revolution. And the communications revolution continues today. And I'm still got uh, dirt under the fingernails. So, um, yeah, I like that. so I've, I've I've started. I've worked for the big big consultancies. Worked on massive brands. Um, uh, set up a couple of agencies um, that have been acquired. Um, and they're you know that they were working on major consumer brands. These days, I really like working with 
uh, entrepreneurs and thought leaders and uh, and and I've um, I'm sort of very close to a number of companies and I'm I'm sort of more part of their team now mm -hmm. and uh, advising in comms and content and social and strategic direction as well as getting on the tools a little bit um, and that's and they're about sort of companies that are around about between 50 and 150 staff because you did that they haven't really got a, a massive marketing department but that you've got entrepreneurs who just make a decision like that and um, you know I was just talking to one client today I put put the idea about a magazine at the end of the year he said let's do it whereas with a big brand that would take a year and a half to do and yeah. it probably never get get off the ground and so I love that side of things, but I'm now more coaching. So that's the consulting side um, under a business called Digital Citizen, and then I um, and then I work with a team of um, of uh, veteran and seasoned uh, freelancers with that, so I can scale up or drop right back. Um, so that's the consulting side, and then I'm doing a lot more coaching. So people want strategy, but they want to be coached. Whereas if you're in a traditional agency, the agency business you want to do everything. That's that's why you make your money, as you guys know. Um, you know, and and there's a lot of uh, businesses that need people to do things. Whereas um, this kind of niche, and it's just sort of evolved, and people have come to me. A lot of nonprofits as well. I'll do a strategy, and then I'll coach them for three months, and and I've found that that really really works because it's really helping the internal team. Uh, take things up one or two notches. So I like working with other teams internally as well. And then there's kind of working with thought leaders who do a lot of it themselves and they just need um, just strategic direction, kick up the pants, um, you know, that sort of thing. So they're probably the three uh, the three key areas. I'm not, speak I'm not speaking at the moment, so uh, not doing much of that, um, but that's another part of what I do, the uh, public speaking and workshops and stuff. I think um, one of the bits I've, I've pulled from that right then is is that difference between the large corporation and the, you know, the solopreneur up into kind of small, medium business with the ability to just make a decision without having to engage with multiple, you know, um, mm -hmm. stakeholders and everything else. And we, we've, you know, a project like this, the Yellow Magic Hour starts over a coffee at breakfast and a few weeks later it's, it's there. Whereas it's for done. a large company that, you know, by the time you've engaged with everyone and you've gone through law and everything else you know it, it, it probably end, doesn't end up happening so no. yeah so, and, sorry, sorry, Jeff, come. I, I was just going to say that that and that's the beautiful thing about you know I've always loved the fact that you can the democratization of information I've loved it from you know even blogging today even today after what is it 13 years or whatever I still just it blows me away that you know you can create your basically your online magazine your online tv show uh, live, um, you know, you're online. Uh, it's radio not a show. show. It's not a show. <laughs> I know it's a show. I mean, but that's the thing. That's that's where it's evolved to, and it's got nothing to do with money anymore. It's got everything to do with, um, you know, just putting yourself out there, being real, having a crack, creating content, understanding your audience, and wanting to do it. And and bigger companies do struggle with that. And those that are are big that can then act small, they're the ones that do really really well whereas the small ones now can act big which is terrific so yeah uh, yeah i think another thing you said before is the fact that you've been doing a lot of coaching to get them to give, give up the kick of them to do it themselves and i think that's a really key thing that's something we do with this um, with yellow tuxedo is the fact that yes you can outsource to us and we'll happily take that on for you if, you, if that's what you need but a lot of the time that's not what you need the fact is you you know your business more than anyone else at all when we talk about community here, your community is it's your following, it's, it's your baby that you need to be growing. And actually, it's having the, the kick up the bum to say, actually, do you know what? I can con I can take control of this. This is something I do need to do. And these are the steps I need to take. And I, I think for you guys, because you, you've really embraced uh, technology and you've really yeah. embraced having new ways. You talked about before when you were working, you know, a, long, a longer period away when it's more face to face stuff. How have you seen that transitioning into more new technology in terms of? Using the tech side to build community. Do you see that happening more more so now, or? Yeah, and I think I think people are, are getting better at at technology, and I don't even think it's an age thing. Some of the best people in terms of building their communities are, mm. you know, not not young bucks, um, as it were. So it's 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 a it's a mindset. You either want to do it or you don't. You either yeah. want to communicate or you don't. And when we we see things about, you know, CEOs of bigger companies and things like that who don't want anything to do with social media and there's 
a raft of reasons why they're not doing that, um, which is I find staggering. But um, when you look at the reasons why, well, then it's probably understandable. But really, I don't think they care. I, I honestly don't think they want it. You either want to communicate with your customers and your people or you don't. There is no black and white. Because we have the tools. There is no excuse not yeah. to do it. Now, yeah. the great thing about it is when you do make it about your audience is you make it about your audience and you bring them part of into your world um, versus the other way around, interrupting them and trying to pitch them all the time. So, again, it's always around mindset. And the technology can be overcome. You know, you learn stuff. Um, one of my clients, is uh, he just celebrated his 100th live stream today. He does a daily live stream. Right. And, you know, I go back to when he did his first one and when you, you rack up 100 pretty quick, actually, so it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. But his first ones were, you know, a bit dodgy and now he's got slicks and your music and he's got this and, you know, and, um, you know, if yours for your first one, this is terrific. You've, uh, <laughs> you've, you've mastered the bells and whistles and um, it's terrific to see and people will give you a free pass if, if, if things don't go so well as well. That's not that the amazing, well. amazing. Amazing. That's what we, we're really big <laughs> advocates of as well is the fact that if you look back at any of our historic stuff, you know, we, we are ropey around the edges and we have kids running around. We have dodgy backgrounds. We haven't always had backdrops and haven't had all the flashy graphics. But the, the key is just starting and doing it. And, yes, Yes, the technology might scare people, and that's kind of the reason for them to shy away from it. But once mm. you get the bug of doing it, and once you're seeing the return, the fact that you are face to camera or talking to the old writing or, or that kind of stuff, actually, mm. the rest of that, the, the bells and whistles side, is something that, that can be learned, that can can evolve as you get to it. But the idea is just starting. The key yeah. though is not to lose your heart, yeah. and and we see you know thought leaders that have blogged and done whatever and video, and they've got better and they've got really slick. And they just start. They just start. Everything about them feels like they're they're, they're inaccessible now. They've they've just got such a big following that they actually they lose that um, authenticity and realness. And everything everything about them is becomes a little bit more fake. And and when we see when you, but when you see someone who's really big and they embrace and they you know, sure they might not be able to get back to everyone in a comment or anything, but it's the intent. Um, and, and, you know, there's so many great examples of brands and, and individuals of all sizes um, that are just just doing this in a, in a terrific way. And it's, you guys know, it's not, it's not easy, but you've got to want to do it. It, won't, it certainly won't happen by itself. Yeah. All right, Trevor, hold that point. We're going to hear more from you in a, in a second. I think we're going to actually... I'm going to flash up a couple of comments yeah. and then we're going to say goodbye to Trevor, which I'm... With, temporarily. Temporarily and bring you back in in a minute. But I, I think you're right. One of the uh, bits is, yeah, you've just got, to, just got to keep going. And the bit you talk about people being forgiving is something we discussed on your podcast, which everyone needs to go and check out, was the, the, the modern definition of professional. People are more forgiving under this modern kind kind of yeah. definition. Uh, before we go, couple of, I want to introduce you to someone you may know, Trevor, not bringing on, just a comment. Uh, Mr. Masters says, here we go, uh, morning. Going to be honest, morning. Mark, it's more about your profile pick on that one. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know. Anyone with alliteration is also amazing. Is amazing. So let's bring up some more alliteration. We've got Mira. Yeah, good morning. And one last comment to flash up is Matt King from Sales Change. says, ha ha, guess what I do first thing in the morning. Uh, so, uh, uh, Matt was sea swimming this morning. Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't think that's what he's alluding to. I know. To, I'm right? trying to ignore that. I'm going more professional. <laughs> professional. He, was, he was out in, in, in the open water having a swim this morning. Right. Right. Let's say, uh, Trevor, thank you for the moment. We're going to bring you back in a minute and we're going to get Ricky in for a bit of magic. See you in a bit, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you.